Put your hands together for Michelle Aljasser! You want to call out the rest of uh, your team? Yeah. Thank you, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> I want to introduce my cast, Adwa, Badr and Yazid Mjewal. Please. <laughs> I want to introduce uh, the producer, Al Mu'taz Al Jifri, please. And uh, the composer, Omar Fadl. And the, finally, the editor, Leith Majali. All right, so think of some good questions. I'm going to start things off. Um, what was the initial, where did the initial idea or inspiration come from? Both the, uh, the concept of like a, a woman trying to get home at night, but also sort of the context that you provide with that opening s sequence. Um, okay. So I always was, like, I, I was always fa fascinated by the dating culture back home. Uh, it's almost like a subculture, kind of. And um, so I always wanted to do something kind of romantic that starts romantic that becomes something else. And growing up, I also always heard stories about camels. And but the ones that kind of um, captivated me the most are the twisted ones as like this kind of kind, like this gentle animal can be vicious if it gets sick. And it's also really spiteful. I know maybe to some Western audience, it's, uh, it's such a, like a fantasy idea, but they do actually attack and they are actually spiteful, just like elephants, kind of. Um, so I wanted to do a romantic film that starts with that and ends up with like a camel beating up someone. <laughs> and that's it. Uh, you know, that's really the motivation. <laughs> and how did you find your lead actor? Oh, Aldo was a really good <laughs> friend of mine. Uh, so I like knew her and most of the cast, I actually just cast the person I tried, I mean she's way sweeter than the character, she's very nice, <laughs> but she is uh, very powerful and she like, she is like really like, like strong and determined just like the character and uh, just knowing her for years I always knew she, she's a star honestly, like I always knew she's special. And I'm just glad that she gave me the opportunity. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And for, uh, for, for Yazid, I met him, I casted him for this role because he's, uh, he's honestly very authentic. And I know for so, some of you guys, like, you can't understand what he's saying. Like, you read the subtitles, but he's a smooth talker. <laughs> and, uh, like, he fit the character very well. And uh, he really balanced the movie. Awesome. So what, uh, the, 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 one of the things that really struck me with the film is the uh, ex exceptional and disorienting camera work. And I, I, I want to know sort of what sort of inspired and what kind of rigs were even using to achieve that. But I also want to hear from the actors of what it was like to be photographed when, I, when it feels like you are running all around them. And sometimes not, you wouldn't, I would imagine an actor might not know where even their frame is. I just kept looking at the ground. <laughs> I wanted to avoid the camera at all costs, like just not looking at it because honestly, like you said, it could be everywhere. It was, um, it was an interesting experience, to say the least. It was definitely, <laughs> definitely an interesting experience. I enjoyed every part of it. And um, yeah, it was, um, Michelle, how do you think I handled it? <laughs> Great. We did a lot of rehearsals. Yeah. So a we lot did. of, like it wasn't shocking. A lot shocking. of running. I shot everything on iPhone. Uh, and well, the rehearsal, you know really what I mean? Good. So they kind of got a sense of like how I'm gonna move, yeah. and that helped, I guess, yeah. Cool. And what was it like working with that camel? <laughs> the camel's actually really sweet. Like, it's the sweetest camel. She's like old and very It's sweet. all sound designed to make it scary. It is, yeah. it is. Um, and uh, I think my favorite part was the beginning of like just being around the camels. Like, that moved me, and I knew that it kind of solidified, solidified the experience for me during the filming process. I'd love to hear about your collaboration with your editor and how, how that process um, went. Uh, some of the editing in this film is just so terrific, both the really um, 
disorienting like montage sequences, but also just some of the staccato editing that you have for comic effect that I think are so funny and so well realized. What was your collaboration like? I mean, I really like gave him a hard time <laughs> in this project, so he can speak for himself. I was very specific with a lot of things, but he added so much to the project. Uh, I also like edited with him some stuff, so he kind of we co we collaborated in a really good way because he's a he's a professional editor, <laughs> like he's a real real editor that <laughs> made amazing films, and I'm like just a guy who knows how to edit. Uh, what was your experience? And, uh, uh, it was a great experience. I've known uh, of Bishal's work since his first short film, maybe 10 years ago on YouTube, and the first time I saw that, I was like, who in the world is this guy? <laughs> And he was 17, I think, at that time. And uh, I've always wanted to work with him. We had developed a friendship over the years in Los Angeles. And uh, when he asked me to edit his first feature, it was quite an honor to work with one of your, our young geniuses in the Arab world. Uh, as Mishal said, this is a shared credit between me and him and in the editing. And we actually did work. We've both edited this film together. Uh, me having the experience and Mishal had this being his first feature, first time working with an editor. Uh, we had to find a way to keep on moving forward, uh, whether it's how we divvy up the scenes, how we continue to perfect the edit and tighten it up. Uh, I just wanted to guide him through his first experience and make it not difficult, but this is not an easy film to edit. Uh, there's a lot that you have to work with, but I think everyone did such a great job. The actors gave us a lot to work with, and, and Mishan, like, you know, it's not just him learning from me, it's also me learning from him. So I think uh, it was a great experience and uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Yeah, no, it's terrific. Terrific editing. And then the score. I, lo I love the music in the film. And I'll, I'll be honest, this was my first time hearing all of it really completed because uh, this film was invited on, on a rough cut because we just saw the potential there. Um, but this, can we speak about like designing the score and working with your composer? And I, I particularly love that, that that you know, final piece, that sort of synth piece that plays. Yeah, yeah. I mean, his music is better than the film. I always tell him that. <laughs> and uh, he like the. I think the the direction we like kind of aimed for is like a western psychedelic type of music. Like an acid western. Yeah, kind of yeah, thing. yeah. So that, so that's like in, in terms of the fi final piece. Um, and then for the rest, please, Elmo, you want to talk about? I mean. It? It's a film that covers obviously a lot of emotional ground and it's an adventurous film. And so it was, uh, I mean, I knew it from the beginning that it would be an adventurous score that would, you know, there's a lot of different moving parts. And, uh, but luckily Mishal has impeccable taste and, uh, you know, the goal was to bring his vision to life. And I think we did. And I think, uh, I think it worked. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. Um, we're going to go to the audience now. Yeah, give the applause for the score. Incredible score. We'll go there in a second. Uh, is there any hands in the air uh, right over there? And then we'll go over there. Yes. Yes, you right in the middle. The question was, how did they achieve the camel sequences? How much of it was real? How much of it was uh, manipulated through digital effects or yeah. practical effects? So actually, this, this scene was the most challenging for me because I, uh, so the, what I did is basically I mixed three things. I did uh, CGI. I had, a, like, I didn't have much budget, so I only had, like, eight shots that I can do in 3D. And then I got a real camel. I bought a real camel for the close-ups. And then, uh, and then I had a puppet leg for the kicking. Um, <laughs> and then I just mixed both of them together. And, uh, and a lot of the scenes, like the camel kind of would, that's not a, it's not a trained camel, it's just a camel, you know? <laughs> and he would just move around and he would improvise a movement, like method acting. And I would just, <laughs> I would just kind of uh, try to find the continuity within his motion. Yeah. So that, that's why like it was, it was kind of challenging. Yeah. <laughs> Over there, and then we'll go there. Yes, yes. Uh, 
No, were, were you in, were the, were, is the question about his inspiration for s certain filmmaking techniques? Limitations. limitations. Sorry, I heard imitations. Sorry, limitations. So the question is, what kind of limitations did they have? Oh, were, were, were there any restrictions to the type of story you could tell? No, we're chill. No, we're chill. <laughs> <laughs> Over there. So the question's about structuring the story. The fact that you, you have a story with a very specific timeline, but editorially, you're also jumping around. So how was, the, how was it writing that process? And then the second part of the question is simply, what do you think is next? I assume for him as a director, or do you want a sequel to Naga, which, <laughs> hey, I would, I, I, another date, maybe. <laughs> um, for writing, I think I wanted to do like a I wanted to do a really simple narrative, like a very basic narrative where it's like just time, 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 and just, you, just see how, how the kind of the story gets escalated with time as it passes. It's, it's a very simple ticking clock structure with just a lot of messed up scenes. And um, I mean, what's next for the story? I don't really know. I barely wrote this one, so I don't really know. But like, hopefully something. Question over there? Which character? The poet character. the poet character. Was the poet character? Are you are you satirizing an, a, a, a poet you know or a celebrity? Um, <laughs> you, or you don't want to get into trouble? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not. I'm not actually. It's just we have a lot of we have poetry is big back home, and uh, some poets are uh, just like yeah. you know, like musicians here. You have ghostwriters, and you have artists that take credit, and it's the same thing with poetry. You know. Yeah. That, but uh, no, no, I'm not dissing someone specific. Not someone specific, <laughs> no. Do we have any questions in the balcony? Yeah. Yes, right there. Sorry, I missed you. The question's about the relationship between the camel and Adwa's character and the limits that they face and, and their frustrations with those limits. Okay, I'm gonna answer the first part then Adwa can answer the second part. Um, so uh, I just wanted to give, uh, I wanted both of them to be kind of uh, a little bit three-dimensional in terms of like when, when the mother is attacking her, you, you kind of don't know who's in the right because she tech, like her, her and her boyfriend technically killed the baby and uh, but at the same time it's not her problem and then and I wanted them both to have this negative internal energy and this justification to act up. And uh, I think that's, uh, and, and like also like um, each act that she does through the movies, I kind of out of, uh, out of holding grudge. Um, and that really like made her uh, uh, kind of added more conflicts in her way instead of making it easy and for the performance. Well, I think she's a product of her environment, and that really helped me understand the character. And as Mashad said, I'd like to build on the fact that like everything she did resisting ex her expression just led her to more trouble. So it wasn't until that she finally exploded that she was able to just find some peace. And for me, that's what helped me understand the characters, the symbolism between her and the camel, and just understanding really like what's causing the pain and it's the, the inability to express yourself. Thank you. Question right over there. Oh, the the the, the scene. The, it was a, uh, the question is about the scene in the poet's tent and the the formal conceit of having them so far away from each other, right? Yeah, yeah that sequence. What what inspired that? Uh, visual joke because it's such a funny sequence in the film. Uh, well, I think it's uh, so we built this tent and it cost a lot of money, <laughs> and I didn't, I really didn't have a good scene or justification yeah. to why it's so long. I just wanted it to be like he's wealthy and he has the same fabric that her friend couldn't buy like pillows from in the shop. He has a whole tent of, and I just wanted 
I wanted to add more to his wealth that is like sometimes uh, he's so wealthy that it's inconvenient to even communicate. <laughs> and, uh, and that's really where it came from, yeah. <laughs> that's great. Um, another question? And uh, Yes, right there. How does Amazing. it feel to bring air re representation <laughs> <laughs> to, to TIFF? How, how does it feel to bring air re representation oh. to a festival in the West? I mean, I'm, I'm very privileged, honestly, and I, I feel very happy to represent uh, my culture in this way because uh, I feel like I'm representing it the, like, in a way where usually the West, they don't see it that way, you know what I mean? And like, especially for... Uh, a Saudi uh, woman character, like usually they're presented in, in, a, in a very gentle, you know what I mean, matter, and then the matter, <laughs> and then uh, and it's pretty like kind of shallow, and I kind of wanted to show how, like just give a more of an authentic presentation of, uh, representation of that, so I feel, I think I feel good. How does so, it feel for the rest of you? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's amazing. <laughs> It feels amazing. It's incredible. Like, I just wanted to jump on be like, it's amazing. I'm so happy to be here. This is such a dream. And it is. It is a dream come true. It is definitely a beautiful thing to witness in today's world. So I'm incredibly, incredibly grateful to TIFF and, like, this whole process and just being here and the whole team. We wouldn't have done it without them. And I'll leave that. Yes. 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 <laughs> We'll have a question over there, and then I've got one more, too. Yes. Could you, could you talk a little bit about the backstory in the opening sequence? What inspired that? Uh, I think... Should we just, just Google it? <laughs> you can Google it. It's just a thing I read a while ago, based on a true story, like just a while ago, and then I just I was like, that so would be a sick scene. And then, uh, and then I shot it. Uh, that's it, <laughs> really. I don't have a lot of motivation. Like it's just, uh, I just want to do fun stuff sometimes. Yeah. Well, I think it's it's a very effective sequence for you know the cast a certain specter. It kind of clues you in to certain ideas in in the film. Yeah. One thing I wanted to 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 ask about is I just love that car chase so much. It's such an incredible car chase, and I just want to know: is are there any stories about how you had to shoot that car chase? Yeah. Uh, or that 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 shot where the cars were, the cameras revolving around mm -hmm. the car. I just want to hear all about that before we wrap things up. Oh uh, well, I want to introduce you to the stunt man, this guy, because we didn't have a stunt <laughs> dude. He was actually driving the car, the main cast, and we didn't have like. Um, a Russian arm or something cool sure. to shoot with, you know what I mean? Like when they do car chases. So I kind of wanted to go with a, with a very like a dirty, kind of a, almost like a rock music video look. Uh, and um, it, we de definitely got into like a little bit of trouble in that neighborhood. But like <laughs> it, was, it was good at the end. Uh, but like, um, yeah, we got like, yeah, we got, it got postponed and stuff. That shot where the camera like starts in the car and then it feels like it pulls back, how yeah. was that achieved? Uh, hidden cut. Hidden cut, yeah. nice. <laughs> awesome editing, answer. please, please give it up for Naga. And remember, you have a chance to vote for this film. How cool would it be if the first Saudi film Midnight Madness wins, tiff.net slash vote. Do not forget to vote for the films at the festival. Thank you so much. Do it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.